Hello everyone. I hope everyone is having a nice shining day today. So today we will discuss the protocol of care of critically ill surgical patients versus the advanced trauma life support. So this actually a lecture which can be for candidates of the MRCS, MRCP, MRCOG candidates. So let's start having some fun and swimming in the pool of science. Being as a doctor, not even candidate for those exams, you must be aware how to perform those protocols even in your country, even if you are outside the NHS system. Because when you are in the street, in the hospital, in the ward, you must be ready to restore the hemodynamic stability of your patient. Next. So firstly, I must say, I will manage my patient according to ABCD approach via care of critically ill surgical patient or advanced trauma life support by securing patent airway, adequate breathing and circulation. So this is must be the introduction when you are talking to your examiner or when you are talking to yourself while you are studying, this is the introduction. And then you can explain that in details. The CRASP and BRIEF, don't mention never in the exam CRASP, say care of critically ill surgical patient. The airway first, you must secure patent airway. So airway is the first step. So on this step of the patient alert. So you'll talk to the patient. Hello, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Can you raise your hand? Just talk to the patient. If he's responding to you, so it means he's alert and his airway is patent. If he's not responding, if he is not responding here so you will start to look and to listen and feel so then you will diagnose the lock you will inspect for the presence of any foreign body in the mouth and the respiratory movements and listen you will put your ears near the mouth of the patient and you will listen to any abnormal sounds, strider, gurgling, whatever, and feel the air gush from the mouth on your cheeks. And then you will secure patent airway by the oral or nasopharyngeal airways. And then you will connect the patient to the high flow oxygen via an reservoir bag High flow oxygen, it is 12 to 15 liters per minute, and never talk about neck collar or strep here, it's only in ATLS. Next. Then the breathing. The breathing, you will start to talk about breathing by doing mini fast chest examination. It means inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation, okay? And most importantly, you must inspect the respiratory movements. They are the presence of accessory muscles in the respiration. And then most important, yeah. And then you will palpate. The most important two steps is the respiratory rate in the inspection and the accessory muscles and then in palpation is trachea centralization. You will do mini fast chest examination to the anterior and lateral chest wall. Some guidelines say to the anterior, lateral and posterior chest walls so both are accepted. You will connect the pulse oximetry to check the oxygen saturation in this step. We will discuss in more details what is the difference between CRESP and ATLS in the upcoming slides. So you will do mini fast chest examination, inspection, palpation, percussion, 
auscultation. And you must to make sure that there is equal air entry in both sides. In the percussion, you must exclude mimo and hemothorax. And we will discuss this in more details in the upcoming slides. After the circulation, the circulation you must to do the golden heaven seven steps. Golden heaven seven steps by checking first. If you want to memorize those things, you must to imagine your body, how to use your own body, your own study template. First, touch the tip of your finger. Here is the capillary refill and the capillary blood glucose, which we will need later on. And then on your, in your rest, there is the pulse. And then in the pubertal fossa is the brachial artery blood pressure. So in the finger tap is the capillary fill and the capillary glucose, and the rest is the pulse. In the cubital fossa is in the cubital fossa is the uh, blood pressure, and then the temperature in your skin, then urine output, central venous pressure, and cardiovascular examination. Most importantly, you will listen. You will not perform full cardiovascular examination, but you will perform. Just listen to the heart sounds. To assess the response, now you did the resuscitation. How to assess the response to your resuscitation? The same steps. You will use large bore cannula. In the CRESP, one large bore cannula is enough, but in ATLS, two is a must. You must perform electrocardiogram and chest x ray in those steps. Next. Here you insert large bore cannula. What are you going to do next? You will insert three multiplied by three and you will obtain this table. Four multiplied by C multiplied by double GL. The force you will put inside the cannula fluids Resuscitation fluid, most importantly, is Hartman, which is going to be avoided in hyperkalemia due to presence of potassium. Number two, blood. Number three, nutrition. And the triple therapy, anti-pain, anti-ulcer, antibiotic, anti-pain, anti-ulcer, antibiotics. Never forget about that. The triple anti is anti-pain, anti-ulcer, antibiotics. And the vasopressors and the septic, septic shock, inotropics, and condogenic shock, or you're going to use them both. But from cannula, what are you going to obtain from cannula? From the cannula, I'm going to obtain the four C's, CBC, the cross matching for the blood, CBC for the blood, coagulation profile for the blood, keratin and renal function, this is for the kidney. And then the ABG, and from the G is glucose and liver functions. So you will put inside the cannula this, and you will take from the cannula this. Put, input, output, input, output. Next. The disability. The Quest protocol is mostly an admitted patient. He is in your ward. Okay? So how are you going to assess D? disability and the admitted patient you must only use the avbu system so how are you going to use that first you will look to the patient and never say glasgow coma scale it's only in atls and we will notice now the difference between two protocols so the alert is if the patient is talking so he's alert if he's not his eyes are open, so try to talk to him, like raise your hand. He will raise your, his hand, so this is responsive to verbal commands. And B is not responding to the verbal commands, so try, he is responsive to the pain. And you, he is totally unresponsive. E is exposure of the wand or skin, and we will notice now 
what is the difference in CRISP and ADLS protocol? Now, the CRISP versus advanced trauma life support. So we will start here again. Uh, the patient is, this is CRISP on the left side and on the right side, it's gonna be the ATLS. We have previously mentioned that in the airway process of the patient alert, we can proceed to proceeding if not assessed by lock, listen, and feel. You'll secure patent airway by chin lift and jaw thrust and remove any foreign bodies and then try to use the oral or nasopharyngeal path of airways or endotracheal intubation. The high flow oxygen via non reserve bar bag, 12 to 15 liter per minute. I never talk about Nick Kohler, but what is how it's going to be in ATLS? Well, in ATLS, the ATLS, you'll perform those steps. You will, in the inspection, you will look for previous or my existing, or existing. So in the uh, ATLS, you will do the previous steps, but what is going to be additional here is to inspect for maxillofacial fractures. In, in securing parent airway, you will do the same, but what is going to be additional here is additional to what is previously mentioned in the CRASP is cricothyroidotomy and tracheostomy. Here you will talk about neck collar or straps. It's only mentioned in ATLS. There is must be cervical spine fixation. Why? Because you don't know, maybe he's having a fractured spine. So if you are moving the patient in wrong way, you will, for sure, you will cut his spinal cords into million pieces. So you must fix the cervical spine by collar by sandbags, by fixating taps. But why only cervical? Because the thoracic and the lumbar, they are supported by the uh, the ribs and huge, huge thick muscles, but the neck is the most weak part here. Next, the breathing step we just mentioned, most importantly is to check about the respiratory rate, the trachea centralization, surgical emphysema, and auscultation on bilateral equal air entry in the pulse oximetry and oxygen saturation. But it's really going to be additional here in the advanced trauma life support. Is here in the inspection, the ATLS patient is called dirty patient. Sorry for this word, but this is the most appropriate this is dirty patient and here is clean patient because he is already the crest patient is already admitted but the atls is coming from the street so he is mostly a dirty patient so in the percussion you will check for hemonemothorax and consider chest x-ray for sure to diagnose whether there is pneumothorax or hemothorax or whatever and you will consider needle thoracotomy and tension pneumothorax if there is emergency and there is hemodynamic instability and congested neck veins the chest tube when the patient is hemodynamically stable and then if there is any penetration so you're gonna use as a three-way occlusive dressing so what is gonna happen next is the circulation we are repeating again about the golden heaven seven steps you will touch your fingertip where is the capillary fill and capillary blood glucose and then the pulse the temperature the pulse in your rest and the blood pressure in the cubital fossa and then the urine output and the central venous pressure they're an output a central venous pressure to detect and to show whether the patient is shocked or not there is going to be decrease in the urine output and the central venous pressure. Okay, especially when the patient is hypotensive, so the central venous pressure will be decreased. In other types of shock, it could be decreased or increased according to the timing you are measuring the central venous pressure. The cardiovascular examination, we say that the most importantly is to listen to the heart sounds. And to assess the response, you're going to do the same steps. And 
the large one large pore cannula is enough in the crest protocol the ecg and chest x-ray what is going to be here additional here is additional is fast scan to detect the four quadrants what are the four quadrants we will consider that this is a human body and this is his legs this is his arms i'm trying to draw it in a comic way to make it look very simple and this is his eyes and he's happy so what are the the four quadrants and the right is the liver so it is very hepatic and the left is spleen very splenic and then pelvic and then pericardial area and this is the fast scan it is in the emergency and it's detecting the four quadrants to detect any collections there uh, yeah next Large bore cannula in ATLS say two large bore cannula not one and it is green or gray green or gray because they are delivering one liter of, of fluids in ten minutes or five minutes. Five minutes for the gray and ten minutes for the green. So inside the cannula, you we are repeating the same issues. You will insert this is the input and this is the output, and they are the same which were mentioned. The four C's and the G's, double G's, GGL, GGL, the G for ABG, glucose, and liver function. And never to forget about the triple anti, anti-pain, anti-ulcer, antibiotics. Even in the post-operative period, you will give the patient anti-pain, anti-ulcer, antibiotic. The fluids... The fluid resuscitation is going to be according to the following. If the patient is hypotensive, so it's going to be 20 ml per kg. If it is going to be hypertensive, 5 ml per kg. If it's going to be normal tensive, it's 10 ml per kg. So next. Here, the assessment of the disability. The disability in care of critical ill surgical patient, we say that he is is clean patient. He's admitted in your hospital, he's in your ward. So you will use AVBU system only, the alertness, the verbal response, the responsiveness to pain, and the unresponsiveness. But what is going to be different in the dirty patient, the patient of ATLS? Well, actually, you will use the Glasgow comma scaling, the Glasgow comma scaling. So you will use the eye, mouse, and the hand. Always use your own body, your own study template. Imagine everything in your body, okay? Try to imagine, never to memorize. Try to understand. Never push yourself to memorize. The brain only retains logic data. The brain only retains logic data. So the eye opening. First four is spontaneously opening his eyes. Number three, open his eyes in response to a verbal command to sound. Open your eyes, please, to the pressure. You're pressing, you're doing a painful pressure on his hands to make him open his eyes. Number one, he is not responding at all. About the verbal response. His mouth is oriented. He's talking. He's very conscious and well-oriented about what he's saying. Number four, he's confused. And then inappropriate words and sounds, inappropriate words in number three, inappropriate sounds in number two, and then one is nothing. Obeying for the motor response, raise your hands, please. He's obeying commands. This is number six. He's not responding to the command, so proceed to doing painful pressure, so he's going to localize the pain, the response to pain. The normal flexion. Actually, when you have a painful stimulus, there is flexion. You are flexing, not extending. You're flexing your hands away from the painful stimulus. So here is normal flexion. The abnormal flexion. The abnormal flexion. The abnormal flexion is his flexing his arm away from the pain in an abnormal directional way. And here it is, the extension. He's doing an extension in a response to the pain, and number one is nothing. The interpretation of Glasgow coma scaling, mild, the moderate, and severe. Always below eight ventilate. Below eight ventilate. So here is in the red zone, and which is the most dangerous. Low eight, you must perform endotracheal intubation. 
and then A is exposure of the wound or skin, but actually in ATLS, the condition of exposure is going to be different. In the dirty patient or the street patient, you must perform exposure. You want to expose the back. You want to expose the back, but you are not sure there is several column injuries and you can worsen the condition by splitting his spinal cord. So you're gonna do leg log roll maneuver, which is performed to evaluate the patient's spine and any posterior chest injuries. You see here, they are trying to move the patient. They are trying to move the patient. But what's gonna happen? Actually, someone, this is number one, is gonna fix the patient lower limbs and here, uh, this patient is fixing uh, the torso. So like you can uh, see here that this is number one for the lower limbs and this is for the torso and here there is another last one on the head. So they will count one, two, three and they will turn the patient on this side to expose his back and the first one is looking to back. So again, this is for the head and neck, this is for the torso, this is for the lower limbs. They will count one, two, three, and then they will expose his back to be able to look without doing worsening of any vertebral colon injuries. And this is the end of this uh, slideshow. I hope it is uh, beneficial for our candidates. And this you must know not for exam, it is for any doctor on the planet. You must be aware how to do care of critically ill surgical patient, ATLS, maybe you are on the street, maybe you are in the plane, maybe you are traveling, maybe you are in the ship, maybe you are over the sea. So you must know how perform that and in the upcoming lecture we will visualize a video to explain those steps more and more for the candidates i hope everyone is having a nice shining day today please spread love peace indulgence prosperity and we will have the perfect life we are souls not bodies so respect your soul before your body i hope everyone is going to be a consultant in the UK in the upcoming futures. Have a nice day and thank you.